Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all worldwide here on Enlightened World Network. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm your host of A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. Yeah, the subtitle of this live stream really says it all, doesn't it? Awakening to Love. If you prefer, we could see this as reawakening to love. This will make sense in the context of today's idea that we're going to cover here on the show. It's from the workbook for students, lesson 137, to be specific. And I'll preview that when I am healed, I am not healed alone. All right. When I am healed, I am not, not ever healed alone. All right. So before we launch into this, I just want to thank all of you for tuning in here. And just a reminder, I've had some people reach out to me. Some of you have reached out to me wondering about the back episodes of this live stream. Now, we've been going since January here, and I would refer everybody to the network's YouTube channel. That's Enlightened World Network. The YouTube channel has playlists for every program on the network, including this one. And again, the title is A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. There are playlists there that are searchable. And I think we're up to 165 shows or something like that. So this is particularly helpful if you have questions about a certain specific workbook idea that we may have covered. We're on 137 today, and there are a number of other really, really fun shows as well. Many of them I did solo. On Mondays, I've been doing what I call a special focus, where I take a break from the workbook and focus on a certain subject, a certain aspect of life through the lens of A Course in Miracles, through this thought system. Because ultimately, that's what it is, is a thought system. It's a self-study course that invites and encourages you to look at things differently, (laughs) which is an understatement in that if you're familiar with this, It encourages us to look at them really differently. And that change of the way we look at things produces a whole different experience, doesn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So also on the YouTube channel, you'll find some guest interviews. I have had several guests here on the show, and I had the opportunity just to give them the floor and ask them about their experience with A Course in Miracles, because ultimately, as we'll see in today's idea, this is a journey that's shared. We're not doing any of this on our own, even if it may look like it even if it feels like it, and it often feels like it, doesn't it? I mean, really, when life comes at us, we often feel like we're the only person in the world that's having this experience. If you, for example, in the relationship world, go through a breakup while you're going through it, it feels like you're the only person in the world that has ever been through it and With that being the case, you're certainly the only person that's going through it now, right? It it feels like that. It's not the case. Clearly, right? Clearly, that's not the case. But when it feels that way, we need some words of encouragement. We need a community. And this is what we here at the network are aiming to create. So if you have comments, if you have questions here, if you wish to just pop in the comment thread and say hello, feel welcome to do that. And I will look at these comments, if there are any, during the live, actually, toward the end of everything, to the end of every show. I'll say hi. So pop in there. If you're tuning in and if you're catching me on the replay, I will also take a look at those comments and questions and respond as soon as I'm able. So that's 
something that I'm quite committed to doing for you. So let's look at this. All right, lesson 137, when I'm healed, I am not healed alone. Well, what's healing? Why don't we start with that question? Okay, it's a question for you. What is healing to you? What does that involve for you? What is healing? What does that entail? What does that look like, feel like? How do you know it's happening? How do you know it has happened? How do you evaluate the efficacy of it? Yeah, these are all questions that I invite you to ask yourself. What is your definition of healing? So for many of us here in the world, naturally, we think right away about the physical body. We think about the energy, the life force, prana, chi, call it what you will, that flows through us, apparently, and that appears to animate this thing here, give it life, right? Often people think of healing as occurring on the level of the physical body, which it certainly can. Now, A Course in Miracles and I invite you to go beyond that. What we're doing today is we're asserting something that we've asserted before in a different way, with different words, because, well, Jesus is a wonderful teacher, so he knows that when he dictates an entire thought system to people that he needs to say the same thing many times and in many different ways because more people will resonate with it. It will land with more people that way. Also, as adult learners, we're quite stubborn, are we not? Yeah, we need to hear things a lot, many, many times. So we've seen the idea that underlies today's lesson, that healing is not limited to the physical body. In fact, it doesn't have anything to do with the physical body. It's taking place inside on the level of mind, of our mind. That's what's healed. It's a decision that we make to heal and we heal the mind. As we've also seen in the course, minds are joined. Only the mind can join. Physical bodies can't truly join. Why? Nothing that's unreal, in other words, nothing that's not of God, actually exists. And therefore, physical bodies appear to join. I mean, that's what and that's what hugs are. I have nothing against them. I love hugs. That's what sex is. Uh, again, nothing against that either, of course. But it's not who we really are. So what we're talking about here in the course is truth. Healing takes place in the level of the mind. Ultimately, we're beyond even that, which is a subject for another conversation for sure. But Healing is of the mind, only minds can join. So what's healing? Well, healing is a decision that we make to be whole, to be rendered complete, the way, by the way, that we've always been. We've just chosen to forget that and run around having our seemingly, supposedly separate existence. So while that may produce some very beautiful moments for us, it produces suffering because those beautiful moments are interspersed with anxiety and fear and attack thoughts and obsessive planning over future events that may or may not happen. Yeah, judgment, blame, shame, guilt, you name it, are human lives are like a yo-yo of that kind of emotional experience. Well, how do we get out of that? Well, we make a decision, first of all, 
to get out of that. We've seen several workbook ideas that drive home this theme that above all else I want to see being one of them, for example, from, from a few months back here on the live stream. Yeah, the truth is when we're healed, we're not healed alone. So we make a decision to be whole again, to be one again, and to let truth be what it is and has always been. So if we're truly one, when we as supposed individuals, let's say I make a decision to heal myself, that cannot but have a positive impact, right? It can't help but positively impact other people. It's like a chain reaction. When one person decides in favor of love, in favor of God, they kick off, even if they're not aware of it at the time, a chain reaction that benefits every living thing. Love is abstract. It doesn't know any boundaries at all. Think of how people fall in love with each other. That's an example, right? People can fall in love with each other and live on opposite sides of the world, speak different languages even. Love doesn't recognize any boundaries. And what we're talking about here is the love with a capital L of who we really are. In other words, one with God. That's what I mean when I mean awakening to love. I don't mean what passes for love here in the world of form, in separation. I don't mean reawakening to a beautiful, hot sexual relationship with the man and woman of your dreams, even if that happens to you. Fantastic. If it does, wonderful. All right. Enjoy. What I'm talking about is awakening to the truth of who we really are. which is a completely different and overarching consideration, isn't it? So when we decide to heal the mind, when we do heal the mind through spiritual practice, through love, through the practice of forgiveness, especially if you're following the course as a thought system, as a guidepost for you in your spiritual practice, then as we've seen, and we saw a couple of days ago, when Cindy and I were in Atlanta, and I was at the hotel, and the fire alarm went off, that was, uh, that was fun. It went off during the first couple minutes of the live, and then we went on to talk about true forgiveness. That's a great one from last week. Anyway, where I'm going with this is that the practice of forgiveness, true forgiveness, as it's described and presented for our practice here in A Course in Miracles is the way we, we do this. It's the way we accomplish this healing is mind training. It's what it is, right? It's perceiving things differently. Ultimately, there is no perception. There's no consciousness because there's no subject-object duality. We're all one. So therefore, it follows quite naturally that when I am healed, I am not healed alone. My healing is benefiting all of you right now. Why I felt called to step up and teach A Course in Miracles. That call happened. And within a matter of days, I was approached by Dr. Ruth Anderson here at Enlightened World Network to do a show on A Course in Miracles every day. So it's an example of that. So my decision to heal is positively impacting you. Odds are it already has. It is impacting people that I will never meet because this is not the only platform that I work in. I also teach courses on my own, and I'm always branching out. This is one of the things that I personally love to do is network, business network. So I will reach many more people. That's the Holy Spirit's way of doing it through me anyway. How it may look through you is totally different, but rest assured, when you make a decision to heal, 
and you do heal. You're not healed alone. You impact lives across the globe, people whom you may never meet. You set a pattern into motion that can't help but benefit every living thing. And that is a wonderful thing. We don't have to even know. In fact, we can't know the full reach of what we do when we show up as love. We can't know in the moment. And really, it's not for us to know. And all we do when we try to pin that down is spend a bunch of valuable time that we could be doing something else in, like forgiving, like giving somebody a hug, like reaching out on social media and complimenting somebody, saying something nice. There's plenty of nice things to say, are there not? I mean, really, there are. So when we're healed and we're not healed alone, we're not alone, therefore, this makes total sense. It really does truly and quite logically follow. So who says you can't have spirituality and logic at the same time? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me tune in here to the thread here on Enlightened World Network. And I want to say hello to all of you. And again, the question that I asked a few minutes ago is one that I really want to have you mull over in your mind, because as a teacher of A Course in Miracles, I'm simply doing this instructed here. And well, as, as Jesus himself says here in the workbook, there's no expectation that you're going to blanket automatically hear one of these radical seeming and sounding ideas right away and readily adopt it and accept it as true. Now that may happen, it's happened for me a number of times and something may really, really deep down resonate with you. But if you're experiencing any kind of resistance here, I want to share with you that that is perfectly normal. In fact, it's kind of expected and really it should be expected that we're going to give ourselves some resistance along the path because that's why we're on a spiritual path in the first place. If we were all perfectly enlightened, then we wouldn't need Enlightened World Network, would we? No, we would communicate with God directly, which is beyond thought. It's beyond, it's clearly beyond language. It's beyond even thought. It's beyond consciousness because there's no subject and object for us to be aware of. So because, well, that doesn't appear to be our reality. We need things like this. So I want to pop in here and I want to say hello. We've got several of you on here. Abla, hi, how are you? It's good to see you again. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's God working through us. And Stephanie, hi, hello. How are you? Yes. Yeah, Abla, that's exactly right. Um, this is God working through us. Yeah, am I showing up to teach? Is God working through me in the way that I'm called to? Now, how that looks for you may be totally different. You may be involved in something that doesn't appear to have an educational function at all right? You may not consider yourself the kind of person that is even comfortable or ever would be comfortable turning on the microphone, which is right here, just off the camera, and the light here, the computer pointing the camera at yourself and speaking to the entire planet. I love that, but you may not. You have your own way of contributing. And what I wish for all of us is that we get in touch with our inner teacher. That's what I want for you, is to get in touch with your inner guidance, your guide, your guides, your inner guidance system, God, spirit, source, whatever you wish to call your guide. Get in touch with that and ask what you should do. Because you've heard me say, and you'll hear other spiritual teachers say, without question, that spirituality is about getting out of our own way. In other words, when we, in our little ego minds, think we can run the show, we know exactly what to do. Well, what happens? Well, we might have some temporary success, but we're going to end up 
getting frustrated because we don't know all the answers. And if you're coming from a frame of mind of being limited in the first place, then of course you don't know all the answers, right? That applies to all of us. So yes, it's a really, really wonderful. And um, so Abla, uh, hello, yes. Um, we'll read some of these comments here while we've got a couple of minutes. And thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, yeah. Okay, so healing, Abla, for you, this is really a wonderful comment. Thank you for leaving this, is that it's feeling okay with whatever's happening around us. You, yeah. Okay, I love this. Feeling some sort of peace with whatever's happening around us. That's beautiful. And it's a choice, isn't it, that we get to make. We can choose to feel okay with everything that's happening around us and a global pandemic and variants of a virus, a virus, uh, all kinds of debate over shots to counteract the virus and vaccines and governments shutting down. You know, this is just an example. And then we've got the world of politics and, and you know, the world of finances and all kinds of stuff going on. So the question for us is, can we be at peace in the midst of all of this swirling chaos? Yeah, and the answer is yes. And that is what healing can look like. So yeah, I really appreciate that. It's, uh, it's super important. And, uh, well, yeah, thank you for your next comment. Yes, you feel God, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm in tears right now. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, well, I don't have a lot of time to relate this, but I remember an experience that I had back in the early 2000s where it, it was you know, nothing less than an experience of divine love. And it was very, very beautiful. Uh, you know, I mean, it's beyond words, really, but it was a glimpse. And following that glimpse, I just found myself randomly in tears um, of joy for several weeks. It would just happen. Yeah. Um, and it didn't really make any difference what triggered that. Sometimes it was just looking at a cloud or a flower or hearing a song or a thought that would come up that would just trigger that. And you never know what a message from God, the Holy Spirit, is going to look like. That takes a lot of forms. So that, thank you for that. That's really wonderful. And I'm really happy that you've tuned in here. Now, guys, if you're catching me here on the replay, I want to invite you to leave comments, questions, say hello. And yeah, what is healing for you? Because in the course, it's really clear. It's of the level of the mind. Now, it may or may not produce a what we consider a healing effect on the physical body. It may, I mean, it may. It may. It may not. However, the healing on the level of the mind is where the action is. And that's, well, that's what we've talked about here in the live stream. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I'll be back here again tomorrow. And we're in the midst of several, what I like to call really high powered ideas here in the workbook that are foundational. They're really foundational. And if you make the decision to adopt them or even entertain them, you will see your life transformed, radically transformed for the better. All right. Thank you all for tuning.